Hi, my name is Brad Cunningham, and today I'm going to talk about using an iValue converter to change the data type of a bound value. So I'm going to start with a really simple application. I have a person object with first name, last name, age, and gender. And I've defined gender as an enumeration right here of just male and female. And then in my code behind for my main window, I've defined two person objects, a male and a female. And then I've initialized their values here. I've given them first name, last name, age, and gender. So, so our male is gender male and, and female is gender female. And then I went ahead and just set the data context to itself, its own code behind, just for example here. So in our XAML, we can take, say, two text blocks and just bind the text value to each one of those objects, male and female. And what this will do is actually call the toString method on our class, our person class here. And we've overridden that in the person class to give us a first name, last name, and an age in one formatted string. So I'll go ahead and run this application just so we can see where we're starting from. So we've got Joe Smith 52 and Jane Doe 40. Those are male and our female. So let's say that we wanted to change the background of our text block based on whether this is actually a male or a female looking at the gender. What we'd like to be able to do is say the background is equal to the binding male dot gender. Right. So this isn't actually going to give us a compile error, but we know that gender is our own custom enumeration type, and that's not a valid type for a background. So backgrounds on text blocks and backgrounds in WPF expect brushes, which would be a color. Uh, and our gender enumeration is obviously not a color. So if we run this, it will run, and you won't actually get even a runtime error. But what you will see is if you look in the output window while debugging, let me expand this a little bit. You'll see that you get a system.windows.data error 1 and a data error 5. And the first one says it can't create a default converter between gender, see, between gender here and system.windows.media.brush. And it says consider using the converter property of the, of the binding. Um, and what it's telling you here is that the background property of a text block expects an object that's of type system.windows.media.brush and what we provided to it was an object that's of type namespace before which is the name of our project and gender which is our enumeration type so the runtime doesn't know how to convert that value so what it ends up doing is just silently failing so again you don't get a runtime error here it just won't work our background won't be changed to anything and you will see an output window warning for what's happening. And what that output window warning is actually telling us is consider to use a converter. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do. So what we want to do here is now we know that gender is not a brush, but we want to convert that into a brush based on some logic that we write. So our binding is going to have a converter and we're going to reference a converter and we'll call this a gender color converter. And I like to name my converters with this kind of um, naming convention of the starting type and the ending type. So convert from, convert to, and then I use the, the suffix converter just as a matter of convention. So we'll go ahead and go up here and create this resource now since it doesn't exist. Uh, we're going to create the window resources section. Let me delete this extra. And I'm going to create a converter. Let's create a namespace alias called converters, and then I'll create a key called gender color converter. Now the key here on our resource has to match with how we reference it in the static resource markup extension. So whatever text we put here, whatever name we call this gender color converter, that's got to be the name of the key here. It doesn't have to be the name of the type. This can actually be a different name, um, but the keys must match. I like to keep the key and the type name the same just so it's clear. Uh, sometimes people will will change the type name and have different keys, and that tends to get a little confusing. Uh, okay, so now if we build, we're going to get a build error, and it's going to say converters is an undeclared prefix, and that's because we haven't added the namespace alias to tell WPF where this gender color converter object lives, uh, and we haven't even created this converter yet. But let's first create the namespace alias. So we'll go up to the top here and say XML NS, and we're going to call it converters because that's the alias we use down below. And we're going to set that equal to our own namespace. So our project happens to be called namespace before. So we'll go ahead and set it equal to that. 
now we'll get an underline here that says, well, we found the converter's alias, but we don't know what the type is. And if I go back here and press the colon, you'll see it, it finds the person um, object, but it doesn't see anything called gender color converter. So what we need to do is actually create that converter. So I'll go over to our project and I'm going to right click on our project and I'm going to say add class and I'm going to call this gender color converter. And that's going to create us a class and I'm going to make this class implement the I value converter interface. Now you'll see right away, we're going to get red right underlined saying, I don't know what this interface is. So the easiest way to get this namespace using added correctly is to press control period over the data tip here. And it'll ask you if you now want to use system.windows.data, you say yes. And then again, after that, press control period again, and it'll implement the stub for you for the interface. So now I've implemented the I value converter interface inside my gender color converter class. And what I want to do is take a look at the value that's passed in here. This value is going to be the bound value. So in this case, male.gender is the bound value that we're passing into the gender color converter. So what we're getting here is going to be of type gender. So what we're going to want to do is cast this value as a gender enumeration. So what we can say is uh, gender is equal to the gender value. And then we're going to say if gender equal equal gender uh, male, then let's return a new solid color brush. And we'll press control period to get the using there, new solid color brush. And we want to pass it a color, so we'll say colors dot uh, blue. And now you see we've got, if it's male, and then let's say else, we're going to return, uh, let's actually say else, if it's female, we'll be explicit. If it's female, then I want to return a pink brush. And then else, if it's some new enumeration value we don't know about, then we're gonna return binding dot do nothing which means don't do anything with the convert value leave the bound value let it let it flow through with just the bound value okay so I'm gonna go ahead and put a breakpoint in here so we can kind of step through and see how this works now when I run this what I'm gonna get past is the value of the binding here so I'll go ahead and press F5 to run our application and now I'm going to get my breakpoint inside my value converter and the value that I'm getting past, let's collapse this out of the way, the value I'm getting past is male. I'm going to go ahead and cast that to the enumeration type and now I can check is it male or female? It's male. I'm going to return now a blue brush and the brush is a valid uh, value for the background property that we're setting it to. So I'll go ahead and press F5 and now you can see that the background of our text block now went blue because our converter has taken the data value from gender and converted it. You see the female didn't change because we haven't wired up that converter. So let's go ahead and now add that same converter to the other text block. So we'll say background is equal to uh, binding female dot gender. And we'll use the same converter. Oh, let me copy an extra. Okay. Now that we have that converter already working, we'll go ahead and press F5. We're going to hit our breakpoint uh, once for the male and once for the female now because they're both running through the same converter. Take our breakpoint off here. We'll go ahead and run. And now we have blue and pink. And we've made a decision and converted the value to a valid property type based on the data. And we've done that all through the iValue converter. All right, that's it for using value converters to convert data types in your WPF applications.